Well, it's the next morning, just before 7 a.m. The sun is almost up. I survived the night. <laughs> See, the tent is all frosty on the inside. That's to be expected. See that frost glistening? So hopefully that doesn't make too much of a mess. I'm trying to take down here. But I don't think it got quite as cold as I was thinking. It's probably maybe 12 degrees right now. 12 degrees Fahrenheit above. Um, I was warm for the most part, just, just my thighs. Tops of my thighs and the tops of my shins were the coldest part, even with all these layers on, including the blanket. So I do have my other sleeping bag. I might try and put one sleeping bag inside of the other um, for tonight or the next night. But overall, it didn't, didn't go too bad. Gloves definitely helped, sleeping in those. And having the extra jackets there helped as well. But it is very cold right now, so I'm going to get moving, start breaking out camp so I can start getting warm. Well, at least it looks like it's going to be a beautiful day. Once the sun warms things up a bit. Because currently... There's no clouds, so hopefully it stays that way. But the tent did get quite frosty, so I guess we won't be packing that up in the bag. I'll have to wait. start a fire but a i'm out of wood and b if i did do that my hands would definitely freeze because they're mostly frozen right now so it's time to get in the car turn that on get warmed up and see what the actual temperature is just gonna take a quick walk while the car warms up there it wasn't actually as cold as i thought Whoa, watch that it's slippery here um the car says it's 16 degrees out 16 degrees above fahrenheit um so well, not that bad, but regardless, when it gets down that low, it's still cold. Basin. Almost looks like I'm on another planet here. I feel like I'm in Star Wars or something. It's like the ground's on fire, but it's not. 
boiling water. Hoping that steam over the hot springs will clear up when the temperature gets above freezing, which it is supposed to today. Uh, it's currently probably about 22, 25 degrees out. But in the meantime, I'm gonna make the trek up to Fairy Falls, which is supposed to be the super cool waterfall, very big waterfall. Uh, but I walk through this pine forest here, very young pine forest, a conifer forest. Um, to get there first, so it seems pretty deserted out here, so I'm just making lots of sounds to hopefully not run into any bears. I will say this would be an awesome trail to Nordic ski after a fresh snowfall. It's pretty packed down right now. I haven't seen a single person yet, probably because it's so cold out, but if I had some Nordic skis, this would be great getting there real fast. So this is Fairy Falls, way taller than I expected. It said 200 feet, I guess that is 200 feet. That's pretty cool. Be curious if this freezes over at all in the winter. I mean, it's not winter yet, it's still October. Come February, this might be different. <laughs> That geyser in the background there is called Spray Geyser. Let's see if it erupts here in a second. There it goes, right by that rock in the middle of the screen. For obvious reasons, it's spraying stuff everywhere. And lots of steam. I'm thinking it's probably close to 35 degrees out. So they're just above freezing. There's still quite a bit of steam going into the sky there. It's essentially a boiling river right here. Right along the side of the trail. I think this is coming from Imperial Geyser, which I'm headed to next. It's super hot water, even though it's freezing outside. That's neat. Imperial geyser to be quite vigorous. Throwing a lot of steam right now. Essentially, just big boiling water right there. It seems to come in spurts. So, violence making waves in the little pool there. I don't know if the camera picks those up, but there's definitely some waves, and there it goes again. This is a cool one. And there's no one else around here right now, which is also very cool. Man, that steam is crazy. Instant clouds.
Another cool thing is all the trees on the side of the pool here, all coated in ice and steam overnight. That makes for an awesome photo. I don't know how well you can see it through the steam, but that pool down there is bright blue. That's pretty neat. Now with that steam blowing the other way, you can kind of tell. The geyser's pretty active. Well, I lied. I am not the only one at the geyser. Here's a bison came to enjoy the show as well. You won't be a problem. So right next to the geyser, this is what they call a mud pot. And you can probably guess why. It looks like a pot of boiling mud. Because that's exactly what it is. You would not want to fall into there. First mud pot I've seen though, so that's pretty cool. This looks to be a better angle of the geyser. We don't have the steam between me and it. And there it goes. I'm guessing some of that spray is going 25 feet high. Pretty neat. Well, the steam seems to have cleared for the most part. I'm gonna go back up to that overlook and see what kind of view we can get a Grand Prismatic, Grand Prismatic Spring, Prismatic. Now you can see the full effect of the spring down there. All those different colors. That's awesome. Probably even a better view up at the top. Well, it looks like I'm not the only one that wants to get up and close to Grand Prismatic Spring. <laughs> so we'll see how long this line takes. Hopefully not too long. <laughs> on September 19, 1970, members of the Washburn Langford Doan Expedition gathered around a campfire the last evening of their historic exploration of the Yellowstone country and discussed the astounding natural wonders they had seen. There emerged an idea expressed by Cornelius Hedges that there should be no private ownership of these wonders, but that the area should be preserved for public enjoyment. Others shared these views, and on March 1, 1972, President Ulysses S. Grant signed the act establishing Yellowstone as the world's first national park. In the century since, 1,200 national parks and equivalent preserves have been established by more than 90 nations. And we are here at 
junction of the Gibson and Firehole Rivers. Pretty decent view. Only wildlife I see out there right now is some geese and some fishermen. Quite a few fishermen actually. Well, the good news is I didn't have to wait long at the Grand Prismatic Spring uh, for parking, but it was super busy there, so I did get out of there as soon as I could. Um, there was a lot of steam, so you couldn't really see much anyway. But, so I'm here at Madison Junction now, and the weather is about 50 degrees Fahrenheit, so beautiful out now. Um, we are at a little bit lower elevation, maybe that it was 6,200 feet or something, um, as opposed to 1,000 feet higher where Grand Prismatic was. Yeah, just enjoying the scenery here right now. The weather has turned out to be a gorgeous day. This is Gibson Falls on the Gibson River. Not quite sure of the height, but it looks to be just over 100 feet tall, maybe? Maybe 80 feet? Somewhere around there. Gorgeous view. So this is called Solfatara, according to the sign. It means unstable ground. Basically, there's a bunch of water and gas escaping from the hillside, which erodes it and causes very unstable footing if you were to try and walk on there. That's why you don't leave the trail at Yellowstone. So this is Porcelain Springs. It gets its name from the rich silica deposits. I give it a porcelain-like look, as you can see. You can see there's all little kind of vents and geysers down there. You would not want to walk around there. <laughs> Super cool. It's quite the gusher there in the middle. Definitely feel like I'm on another planet. <laughs> Crazy landscape here. Constant steam jet shooting straight out of the earth. High pressure steam and water. That is some serious pressure there. Wow. Ground is boiling. Apparently I found where the elk are at. This little one is just minding his own business right in front of the car. It's my little guy over there. It's a halfway decent view here across the Yellowstone Lake. This lake is huge. And very, very cold. I think it averages 41 degrees Fahrenheit year round. It's not the best lake for swimming, but beautiful nonetheless. Well, last night I was in C29. Tonight I'm in C44. Came back and C29 was taken. And I only done it for one night. I wasn't sure if I was gonna end up back here. But it looks like I am back here. Just got here, smashed down a pad for the tent. And I'm gonna set up my chair here and try and get a fire going. I don't have any wood, so it won't be a very long fire. But we'll see what we can do. That piece on fire. It's good. A little down below. Got a couple sticks 
on tap here. Get it going. I like that egg carton idea. Save that for the future. going well overall it was a pretty good day just got to see grand prismatic spring which is probably the highlight that was pretty cool it's pretty steamy early on but cleared up so that was nice and i did like the whole i don't know if they called the grand loop um, so that was pretty fun took a while though There we go. Well, for dinner, we're just gonna do the same thing as last night. Don't quite have enough to cook with the grate. Enough fire to cook with the grate. So, just gonna have it cold. Well, it's not cold anymore. Had it warming up in the car while I was driving, so. It is just a little bit above room temperature. It's all the nice. Get my plate out here again. And get my spoon. It's warmer than last night at this time, which is good. And I also got a tomato I'm gonna throw in here. But we'll start with this. to invest in is a cast iron pan. That will make things slick. Just gonna use them other pans that aren't really meant for a fire. More or less meant for a camp stove. This is good the second day around. Well, it was about 8 o'clock p.m. when I finished setting up the tent. So I decided to come down here to the lake, see what there is to see. It's dark out, so there's not that much to see. But one thing that's cool is in the water there, you can see a little dot. Move the flashlight away. That's actually the moon, which is up there. It's almost a full moon, it looks like today, tonight. There's some planet over there. The, the lake itself appears to be like steaming. So for as cold as it is, it's cold enough as the air temperature out. The lake hasn't cooled down that far yet. So it's steaming. It's pretty neat. Take a look down into the bottom. See there's actually some chains there. Oh, and there's a fish. Would you look at that? Definitely did not know that was there. Assuming that's some kind of trout. So that's pretty cool. Looks like a decent size, decent sized fish. I don't know if it's a decent sized trout. See if there's any other ones. This is, it looks like uh, spotted ones, maybe a brook trout. I think the chains are just for anchoring the dock here. Let's see if you see any other fish. I don't see any. Guy's still hanging out there. 
but it's a completely clear night. You can't see it on the camera. All you can see is steam, but the stars are all out. Got the Big Dipper, all of them. Super awesome and completely calm too. No wind at all. That's the other edge of the lake there, other side of the lake. And the best part, there's no one around. <laughs> I don't know how well the camera picks this up, but the reflection on the ice there is completely from the moon. All my lights are off and there's no lights around. That moon is very, very bright. And now the fire is dead and it's dark out, but the tent is up, so it's time to move on in. Home sweet home. All right, I've already turned in here. Similar setup to last night, except for one minor change. I have my 28 degree sleeping bag inside of my zero degree sleeping bag. Because <laughs> apparently neither of them are actually what they say they are. So we'll see if that helps keep my legs a little bit warmer tonight. I don't think it'll be quite as cold, but still probably gonna get down to 20. Um, or below that. So, we'll see you in the morning.